happens to the souls of babies or infants who die? It's a common pastoral question, especially when people are faced with infant or child loss. Common response is that we just can't know because the Bible doesn't say anything about it. Or indeed some mistakenly believe due to the reformed doctrine of original sin that they must or they could be lost. Let's first look at this through the lens of biblical theology and see if the Bible does speak to it and then see what others have said over the years regarding this crucial question. It's helpful to start with what the Lord Jesus actually has to say. In Matthew chapter 19 and in other places in the synoptics, he is insistent that children be brought to him to be blessed. Now, it was a common practice for the Jewish people to bring their children to the synagogue to be blessed by the elders. But Jesus gives us an insight into the heart of God and his care for little ones. Indeed, he uses some actually quite startling language that they're to be brought to him and by extension God because of such is the kingdom of heaven. Now in Jewish tradition and indeed in ours, somebody has not come of age morally until they're an adult and that was the same then. And so Jesus was essentially saying that these children, that even though they are young and they haven't reached an age of accountability yet, that they are blessed by God and that they are somehow giving us an insight into the kingdom of heaven. On the topic of innocence, the consensus seems to be, especially from the Old Testament prophets, if we look at chapters such as Jeremiah 19, the people of Israel are often condemned because of their slaughter of young ones in pagan ritual sacrifice. Indeed, God actually calls it the blood of the innocent. He finds it detestable because there's a hint there that God sees them as innocent. And so, yes, of course, we are all, as the psalmist says, conceived in sin and original sin is in dwelling. But that doesn't mean that that is the final verdict or charge of how God actually sees infants. And then we have a glimpse further in 2 Samuel chapter 12 with David and his infant who passes away. This has happened because of David's sin of rape and murder. And although David pleads for the child's life, the child is not spared. And yet David's language is interesting. David actually comes out of his mourning and becomes comforted when he says the words, he shall not come back to me, but I shall go to him. David clearly evidences some kind of hope that the child is dwelling somewhere beyond this life and somewhere where David would hope to meet that child again. That's the sort of overall biblical picture that little ones and their souls are, are precious to God and blessed by him, that he actually sees them as innocent. And we do have a hint through the story of David that they are in his care. But other theologians have reflected on this question. John Calvin in his Institutes actually argues that it would be impossible for infants to be condemned because they have not had the opportunity to believe or to indeed persist in unbelief. He actually argues that it's clear that John the Baptist was regenerated or uh, made alive unto God in the womb and that that happened as an example and could continue to happen of God's free, sovereign, electing grace. The great Princeton theologian Charles Hodge actually argued that Jesus' words, such as the kingdom of heaven, shows us that it is almost as though the kingdom of heaven is composed of a great many redeemed infants. When we put all this together, it seems perfectly plausible and indeed consistent with the character of God, that for infants who die, who are children, who are babies, whether they're lost 
through miscarriage, through stillbirth, or tragically die while they are still children for whatever reason, that they are enfolded into God's care, that they are drawn into the safety and into the comfort of his eternal rest because of his ability to show grace and indeed his desire to show grace, especially for those who are unable to do anything of themselves. It's a beautiful picture of what we believe about the sovereignty of God in showing grace. But more than that, I think for those of us who have struggled with these issues, we are able to take enormous comfort from the fatherly care of God for all those who tragically die before they are able to grow up.